mental preparation and meditation and visualization and how at the level you play at, everyone's the best. So that's helped you kind of have an edge. Do you think if you hadn't beat Serena here a month ago today, you would have had the confidence to do what you did a few days ago at the US Open mentally? Well, uh, thank you, first of all. Um, I've been preparing mentally for this for um, a pretty long time. I mean, I'm only 19, but I've been doing it ever since I was 12. Like I said, ever since my mom introduced me to it, and I think it's helped me tremendously, especially in tough situations like playing Serena in the finals of US Open. Um, it really, really helps me stay in the present moment, um, especially with my breathing. I think the breathing part of it is very important. And um, it helps me get in my zone and it helps me block out a lot of distractions like the crowd. The crowd was crazy in New York. That's why it's such a special tournament. But um, yeah, I really think the mental side is the most important at this level. Bianca, can you talk about how different it is now being I actually went to the York Dale yesterday. That was my first stop, and I've been getting more recognized than usual. Um, and I came in today. Tennis Canada gave me a very warm welcome, which I really appreciate. So thank you, guys. Um, so yeah, I think it's a little bit different. <laughs> challenging for you the last few days? I mean, you, you've had a pretty crazy schedule. Yeah, it's been it's been pretty hectic. I did some media in New York. Um, I chilled a little bit yesterday, um, and then now I'm here with you guys. So it's going to be an all-day thing today. Bianca, one follow-up here, if I may. Christina, again, from CP24. Are you willing to share any of the comments or conversations you've had with Serena, the brief you know, on-court comments? Because we're all aware of what you said to Serena at the, the Rogers Cup here in Toronto. Um, anything she said to you? Any advice? I mean, you, you've acknowledged you grew up watching her. Yeah, definitely. Uh, we had a really nice moment in the locker room. She actually came up to me after the match, which I really appreciate. Um, she said some really nice things. Um, she said that I'm going to be a very good tennis player and a bunch of other things. I would rather keep it um, in private. I'm sure she'd appreciate that as well. Um, but yeah, above all, she's such a kind person. Um, and hopefully we can see much more of her. Hey, Bianca, I'm Maury from Kiss 925's Raza Mocha Show. First of all, I think I speak Hi. for the whole country. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. Have you had a chance yet to sort of, I guess, celebrate with family, celebrate yourself? I know you had a grilled cheese sandwich, but has there been any cake or anything? Like, have you had a chance to celebrate? Oh, I've had a lot of that. <laughs> the last three days have been pretty bad for my diet, but um, I've been doing a pretty good job with keeping it up, so I think I, I deserve a little bit of indulgement. Um, but yeah, after the finals, actually, we went to a really nice dinner in New York. Uh, just me and my team and my parents. I'm really glad that they were there uh, to support me the full two weeks. Um, and now that I'm home, I'm definitely going to uh, celebrate with some of my friends, get to see them. Um, but it's time to move on to the next after today, after That's all this it. media stuff. No celebrating? Oh, of course, of course. Today I'll celebrate a little bit and um, I'll see my friends, but um, I'm still focused on what's to come. Uh, so good segue there, uh, what's to come. I'm sure it's hard to think past next week, um, as, let alone next year, but we are 10 months from the Tokyo Olympics. Have you thought about what the Olympics might mean to you? Did you watch the Olympics growing up? And how does Olympic champion sound if you think forwards? Yeah, I've been thinking about playing the Olympics for uh, a couple of years. I uh, think it's a very special event. Um, you get to be a part of a, a team. And I think it's different than any other tournament on the tour. So if 
I do get to play that, then it would be pretty awesome. Hey, Bianca, Nick from CTV. Just wondering, have you watched the match yet? And what goes through your mind as you watch it, if you've watched it? Uh, I actually did watch it this, no, not the same night. The night afterwards, someone texted me saying that they, they're re replaying the match. So um, I ended up watching it again. I usually don't like to watch myself play, but I think I, uh, I'd only make the exception for that match. <laughs> Just wow, I still can't believe it really. After Indian Wells, it took me a couple weeks to sink in what just happened that, that week. And then in Toronto, it took me a couple of days. And now, I don't know how long it's going to take, but hopefully soon <laughs> it can sink in. And just with all the eyes of the, you know Canada, the tennis world, everyone knows your name now, everyone's watching you. Do you feel more pressure now to perform? I know you put a lot of pressure on yourself, but do you feel more pressure going forward? Not at all. Uh, yeah, it's definitely the pressure I put on myself, really. There's always going to be external pressure. I mean, I'm sure Canada wants me to do very well. And uh, most importantly, I want to do very well. So I think that pressure really helps me, honestly. Um, I got a chance to speak to Billie Jean King. And she, we were talking about her quote, privilege is uh, privilege. <laughs> Pressure is a privilege. And I really think it is because uh, it really, it motivates me. And I think I'm a perfectionist. So if I step on the court and I do my best with what I have that day, I think that's all that matters to me. Sorry, lady. In the, in the box, yeah. Hi, Bianca. I'm Nikki from Sportsnet. I know everything has been a whirlwind for you, but have you had a moment to process what this win means to the entire country of Canada and perhaps now you being elevated to role model status. Is that a role that you accept? Yes, I do. Uh, my goal, one of my goals was to be able to be an inspiration to many people and I think I'm starting to do that which means a lot to me. Um, if I step on the court and I show a good example. Um, I think it can drive a lot of people to maybe even pick up a racket. I know um, it's starting to, this sport is starting to get more attention because of what happened at the US Open. I've been getting some messages saying that um, they've never watched tennis before, but now they will which is pretty cool. And I've gone some where they said that they actually started playing tennis because of me. So yeah, that's amazing. I'm really humbled. Hi, Hi Bianca, it's Philippe uh, with Radio Canada. Um, with this historic win, you know, big sponsorship deals headed your way. You're becoming more financially independent. How will that change your relationship with Tennis Canada? Are you, will you still have to rely on them as much as you did before? Um, well, they've been supporting me since day one, and that's all I can ask for. Um, definitely, I have more money now, um, so I don't think I'm going to have to uh, depend on anyone, really. I'm uh, standing on my two feet alone with what I have, so it, it feels good. It feels good. But they're always going to be there to support me, no matter what. Uh, Bianca, you were talking a minute ago about uh, you know getting the attention, and obviously we saw you on uh, Jimmy Fallon, um, uh, Ryan and Kelly. What was that experience like? It was so fun. Uh, Jimmy is such a cool guy, and I'm really glad I got that experience. Um, I still can't believe I was on that show. I didn't think he was a real person <laughs> before I actually met him uh, because I've watched his show many, many times and being able to sit in that chair um, was really cool. Quick follow up to that. I mean, uh, you have the big, biggest uh, A-listers who show up on that show. Uh, Tiff is in town. If, some, if uh, there was a movie made about your life, who would you want to play you and your mom and your dad? <gasps> That's a good question. I've never got asked that before. Um, 
I really like Jennifer Lawrence to play me. Um, she's a really cool person and I feel like we have a pretty similar vibe. Um, my parents, I don't know, are they here? No. <laughs> you should ask them because I don't want to say anything, anything wrong. <laughs> Bianca Devon with CBC Sports, congratulations. Here's what Pam Shriver, the great Pam Shriver, said about your arm. She says it's like a top-of-the-line Ferrari. It needs to be serviced, it needs to be watched over, and put in the garage. You had a physiotherapist with you. Injury has been a thing. How important is staying healthy going to be moving forward? I think it's the most important thing. If I'm healthy, then... I think I can do even bigger things in this sport. Uh, one of an athlete's biggest enemies, I think, is being injured uh, because it, like, we're we're sitting on our on our butts watching people play when we're injured, and uh, I don't think any athlete likes that. So I think the main goal right now is definitely to stay as healthy as I can because I've been. Um, injured quite a bit in my short career so yeah I'm really happy that I have a physio with me now full-time because I think recovery is one of the most important things. Hey Bianca, Lindsay with City News. Congratulations on the win but we just talked about Jimmy Fallon and all that and I know in your post you know, after winning you were asked if you visualized fame as part of this all and you said no but you could probably get used to it so I want to know even your ride back to Toronto was a different flight than I'm sure you've normally taken. What's, I guess, kind of surprised you after the journey of actually winning the US Open that you've had to adjust to? Well, definitely flying in a, in a private jet. I think Uninterrupted and uh, Vinay for that, they, they hooked me up, so that was, that was really fun. No need to go through customs or security. <laughs> I was back home in like 45 minutes. Uh, which is very convenient. Um, so definitely that would have to be the one thing that stood out and obviously being on Jimmy Fallon. Hi, Bianca. Camille with Global News. First of all, congratulations on all the success. Um, at 19, you've mastered so many elements of the game and now you have to start training for Beijing Open. What elements do you feel like you can still work on to improve yourself? Where do you need to get better? There's always room for improvement in anything, so I'm just going to keep improving my game. I know that it's been working pretty well for me so far, so I'm definitely going to improve that. I think the shot selection part will definitely be an emphasis. And obviously, I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing on the mental side of things and get stronger physically as much as I can. I think that's a crucial part of this, this sport, too. Not easy. What's up, Bianca? Devo Brown, Breakfast Television. Congrats. Thank you. All right. So in the tunnel, right before you came out, we see you kind of just vibing out in your <laughs> headphones. No pressure. Cool. You said it's an opportunity. It's not pressure. What were you listening to when we see you jamming out? What was that song? <laughs> I was listening to Hot Girl Summer <laughs> by Megan Stallion. That's definitely the song of the summer. Um, it's a really catchy song, and it gets me pretty pumped up. <laughs> it's been your summer, so clearly it makes sense. Your clutch in those situations where people kind of count you out, what do you attribute that to besides, you know, you're talking about the mental thing. Like, there's a moment where you kind of plug your ears. You know, what's going through your mind there, and how do you just kind of tune all that out? I could barely hear myself think out there, really. It wasn't easy blocking out the crowd, and I think that uh, gave an edge to Serena. I mean, that's why she's a true champion of the sport. She's known to come back after being down in matches, so that was expected. And um, I think I prepared well before that because I spoke to my coach about it, and he said, if you're going to win this match, you're going to have to stay focused from the beginning of the match till the end, no matter what happens. And um, at that five all, uh, no, the six five game. Uh, no, it was five all. That's, yeah, it was five all because the score was seven five. <laughs> um, at uh, that moment, I just told myself, 
put the ball on the court. Um, the goal right from the start of the match was to make her work. Um, and before that, at 5-1, those couple games, I felt like I was going for too much. I think I was really excited because I was literally one game away from winning the tournament. It's hard not to focus on that. Um, but I'm just really glad with how I managed those two games at the end. Because I think if we went into three sets, it would have been another story. Bianca Bruce Arthur from the Toronto Star. Um, it hasn't just been the US Open. This has been a whole year for you of success and escalating success. And you can only kind of focus on the next thing. But has this year and has the US Open changed the ceiling on what you can reasonably expect from your career now? Have you thought about that big picture and what you kind of hope and think you can accomplish? Yeah, I um, have a pretty big expectations for myself. Um, I've accomplished a lot in this past year, and I feel like I can do even more in this sport. Um, now I actually believe that I can do more for this sport after all of this success. So I'm just going to keep striving and hopefully win many more Grand Slams from now on. Have you ever thought about where does the hunger come from to keep pushing and keep going and kind of think bigger and bigger and bigger? I think it's the passion I have for the sport. Ever since I picked up a racket, I've loved it. And I think it's just, um, me striving to do better as a player and as a person, I think, uh, that's what really gets me going is just to create history and uh, win as many Grand Slams as possible, become number one in the world. Like my mom always says to me, uh, don't forget who you are and dream big to get big. And I think I've been doing that for a pretty long time now. And I think that's what's contributing a lot to my success. Uh, hey, Bianca, Moment Qureshi from 680 News, back here. Uh, two quick questions for you. One, it's been kind of a crazy few days for you. Have you gotten any sleep, or are you running on adrenaline right now? I'm running on adrenaline right now. It's, it's been hard to actually close my eyes. Um, but hopefully, after today, I can get a good night's sleep in my bed at home. There's really no place like home, so I think I won't have any trouble with that. And, uh, you know, when you won Rogers Cup, you saw kind of how people were reacting here, but it kind of got to a whole nother level as you were progressing from the quarters to the semis to the finals. Did you have any idea about how kind of much hysteria you were causing here in Canada as you were doing your thing down in New York? All I know is the hype on social media. That's all. But I've gotten some phone calls saying that there's... Um, people going crazy in, in Toronto about uh, what's been happening um, these past two weeks. And now I get to witness it in person, so I'm really excited for that. Hi, it's Ayinka from She's for Sports. I want to know, um, you know, we all know you for having a very calm and confident demeanor. Now, if you didn't win the U.S. Open, what would you tell yourself to motivate yourself, um, you know, mentally to prepare yourself for your next goal? Well, I think just reaching the finals um, is motivation enough. I love playing in front of big crowds. Um, I just love everything that comes with the sport, uh, staying in nice hotels, traveling the world, um, and being able to meet so many cool people like Jimmy Fallon. Uh, I was on the I was on the View. I met Ryan and Kelly on Live with Ryan and Kelly, which is pretty cool. Um, I think all of that is pretty good motivation for me to just keep keep striving. Hi, Bianca, just in the back here. Uh, congratulations, first of all. Um, I can appreciate that it's still so soon after the victory. You haven't really had much time to decompress or anything, but um, Mayor Crombie's been uh, pretty vocal in terms of wanting to do something uh, for you to honor you in the city of Mississauga. Um, 
I would take it there's nothing imminent, but has there been any discussion, uh, interaction with her or her team about those plans? Uh, not directly with me. I've just been seeing everything on social media. But damn, if that happens, that would be so crazy. Uh, I was not expecting any of this. But I can get used to it. <laughs> It's been it's been pretty cool, and I can't thank everyone enough, really, for all their support. It they, you guys just keep helping me strive to do better and better, and I'm I'm really grateful for that. Maybe just to follow up as well. Um, would you mind going over your connection to Mississauga? I believe you may have been born here, um, eventually moved back to Romania with your family, but um, would you just run me through that maybe? Yeah, so I was born in Mississauga. Uh, after my parents immigrated from Romania back in, I think, 96 or 97. And I grew up there. I had an amazing childhood. Um, and then I uh, got into the Tennis Canada program at the age of 10, I think it was. And then I've been with them ever since. We moved to Vaughan so we can be closer to the training center. Scott Stinson with Post Media, Bianca. Um, was there a point in this season where you felt like you could play with the best players in the world? Was it as far back as Auckland, or has it been a thing that's been building over the course of the year? It would have to be after I played Venus Williams. I think that's the moment of my awakening, I guess. I really thought that I could play against these top players um, on these big stages like I've always dreamt of. And then Indian Wells came around and that's when I actually believe that I can do really, really big things in this sport. And then after Indian Wells, when you had your injury layoff, what did you do in that time to sort of not lose the focus that all of a sudden you'd accomplished a bunch in their sport and yet you were able to come back and play at that same level? I was doing a lot of things. I was working a lot on my fitness, which I think was a must. Um, and I was working on the mental side of things. I was trying my best to stay as positive as I could. Life is not perfect. So I think the most important part of that period off was to have a good mindset going into things. I changed my diet. I uh, changed the way I schedule my tournaments. I changed um, some of my routines and I worked a lot on prevention because I think that's a very important thing. And uh, honestly, I think, it, I think it was a really good thing that happened. I've been playing a lot uh, before that. Uh, I think I played like almost 30 matches in three months. So I'm glad I got that chance to just chill a little bit. I mean, obviously I wanna be on court playing, but I really believe that everything happens for a reason. Hey, how's it going? Me again, hi. hi. Congratulations again, Maury Razamoka Show. Um, similar to the Mississauga question, Mayor John Tory this morning tweeted that if you want a parade, you can have a parade. So just so we can set aside the date or you know book some time off work, can we have the parade? What do you guys <laughs> do? you want a parade? <laughs> yeah, why not? <laughs> that would be really cool. Um, I don't know what my schedule is at this point, but I don't know. I have no idea. <laughs> but if it happens, it would be really cool. Bianca, the other night, uh, at Arthur Ashe, you got pretty emotional when you said this visualization stuff works. And it sounds like you got pretty specific about what success looked like. Have you already started to think about what that next visualization and what that next goal looks like? I didn't speak to my coach yet about that because I usually go over my goals with him. But I kind of have an idea. Um, I want to do um, well in my next couple of tournaments in Asia, obviously, to hopefully qualify for the WTA Tour Finals in uh, China and crack the top three. 
Uh, your success this and year. And stay healthy. <laughs> obviously. I, I had to wait a little bit. Uh, <laughs> your uh, success this year hasn't just thrust you into the spotlight. Your parents and Coco have also been thrust into the spotlight because of this. I think your mom and Coco were trending at one point online. Coco seems to be handling it okay. I'm just wondering how your parents are handling their newfound fame. Yeah, they've been getting a lot of attention too, um, especially my mom. I think she has her own BuzzFeed post. I think that deserves a round of applause. <laughs> uh, it was really funny, all of the all the tweets uh, my mom has been getting, and obviously my dog Coco. Um, I'm just super grateful at the end of the day to have them in my corner, um, and my dad. Obviously, he's. Um, He's part of everything that's been that's been going on. Um, it's just so nice to have amazing parents like them because they still treat me like I'm me, not like anything else. Uh, they've been handling everything super well, and they help me stay grounded. And I think that's uh, that's uh, very important. So I'm I'm really grateful for that. It's really important who you surround yourself with. So no more questions about Jimmy Fallon or Jennifer Lawrence, but uh, the question is, <laughs> you've been part of uh, Tennis Canada since you're 11. You know, I, I've done some stories way back on some of the players. There's Dennis, there's Felix, there's, uh, have you had a chance to, you know, talk to them? I mean, I'm sure what you've done is inspired them. Yeah, they've sent me really nice messages. Um, they said that, they're very proud and that um, this win actually gives them motivation to keep striving and doing better. So coming from them, that means a lot. And I'm sure that they're going to do such big things in this sport. They are, they've already had, but I know they're, they're hungry for more. Bianca, do you have any uh, advice for, for young tennis players who kind of want to follow in your footsteps and advice on how you how to make it it's not an easy road that's for sure but it's a fun one if you really love playing this sport um, then go for it uh, dream big to get big uh, because that's what I've been doing ever since I was little no dream is too big so Follow your dreams. Um, know that there are going to be some sacrifices involved. There's going to be hard work you're going to have to put in, a lot of dedication. And um, if you really believe in yourself and you don't let anyone get in your way and try to block out distractions, then I think you can do really big things. And obviously surround yourself with people that support you. That note of, of sacrificing, what's your tennis and personal life balance like? Or is it all focused on tennis? No, I think there should be a very good balance uh, to have uh, in your life, in anything you do. Um, the social part helps me stay grounded. I love to hang out with my friends and to be surrounded by my family as much as I can. I know that's not always easy because I'm always traveling, but when I get the chance to come home, it's it's always amazing. And um, yeah, I, I just really think that's the most important thing, especially if you want to be a professional athlete, is to have that good balance with social life and career life. Uh, Bianca, um, congratulations from the Ontario Tennis Association and um, uh, you've been excellent over the year. We've seen you grow up uh, since you were 10 years old uh, playing tennis. Um, but I have one question. Uh, where's the trophy? That's a good question. Wasn't, wasn't I supposed to bring it today? No. <laughs> I've been thinking about way too many other things. I totally forgot about that. No, I got to I got to hold it a lot in New York, um, but I'm definitely not gonna get bored of holding uh, holding that bad boy. I'm definitely gonna put it in a nice area at home so I can see it for a really long time, whenever I am home. Uh, Bianca, Nick again from CTV. I'm over here to your right, right here under the speaker. 
right here, right here. Hi. Yeah, I think there's a, well, that's a light. Uh, anyway, um, you're sitting in front of a hashtag, She the North. You kind of share that with the Raptors, We the North. They're a professional team. You're an indiv individual professional tennis player. What is it like to have a hashtag that's all about you? And, and what's that like? You're sitting in front of that now. It's crazy. Like I said, I wasn't expecting any of this, especially having my own hashtag. It's pretty awesome, like I'm alongside the Raptors. Uh, I watched their historic win and uh, I've been getting some messages from, from some of the players, which was really, really cool. But yeah, having my own hashtag, if someone said I would a couple years ago, I, I would not believe them. <laughs> But yeah, what's happening in Canada right now in sports is pretty historical. Bună, Bianca. Felicitări. Uite, te torturez din nou cu, cu limba română. Știu că trebuie să exersezi. Vreau să știu cum s-a schimbat viața ta în ultimele aceste zile de la US Open concret. Uh, ce s-a schimbat? Ai primit o, o mulțime de bani, un sac de bani. Uh, și cu cine, uh, ce mesaje ai primit de la celebrități, de la oameni uh, faimoși? Da, este foarte diferit. Um, am avut multe mesaje de la The Raptors, uh, Maple Leafs, Shania Twain, um, Steve Nash, mulți oameni din Canada și apreciez asta foarte mult. Ultima întrebare. Cum afectează gena românească succesul tău canadian? Ești o canadiancă jet be jet, însă cum afectează gena românească succesul tău? Eu cred că pasiunea mea vine din uh, România uh, pentru sportul ăsta și Uh, eu simt toată iubirea din România și vă mulțumesc foarte mult pentru susținarea voastră și uh, eu nu sunt gata, hai să mai facem și mai mult. Thank you guys. Oh, Drake messaged me by the way. He's like, wait, let me read it. <laughs> I'm actually having a conversation with him. This is unreal. <laughs> He's like, here I am, smiley face. Congrats. We are all so proud of you. I've been liking every post with you in it, LOL. I thought you'd see. <laughs> I didn't. I was barely on social media. I was just posting things, but... Yeah, that was cool. That was I don't even know what to reply to that. Uh, it's going to take me a while. I He has the scene message? <laughs> don't worry, I'm going to answer. I'm going to answer. Yeah. I can't arbom him. <laughs> But yeah, I just wanted to say that. <laughs>